You're listening to The David Knight Show. Welcome back. Joining us now is Simon Roche from South Africa. As I said earlier in the week, uh, I, in my past conversations with Simon Roche, I said, you know, when we see what is being done by the Marxists that have taken over the government there in South Africa, the radical Marxists, calling for land confiscation, farm confiscation, saying kill the Boer, kill the white, chanting this uh, in rallies and so forth. I said, this is our future. Uh, they want to create a race war, but we also will have reparations that will be a part of this. I didn't really think that it would happen as quickly as it's happening now. But now we've got a presidential campaign uh, that is rolling out. We've got a couple of dozen people who have indicated that they will run. But of the front runners and of the ones who have definitely thrown their hats in the ring, most of them are talking about reparations in one shape or the other, one flavor or the other, one color or the other. Which brings up some interesting questions here in America as to how they're going to, how these demagogues, these thieves, these Marxists are actually going to implement this. For instance, who's black? Is Obama black? He's got a white parent. He's got a black parent. We've got a lot of mixed parentage here in uh, the U.S. Who is white, for example? Is Elizabeth Warren white? Or is she Native American? Or what? You know, how, what percentage? Is it uh, one one thousandth? Uh, does that make you, uh, does that give you a pass? Does that give Elizabeth Warren a pass? Or does it give her compensation and reparations that she supports? What about blacks whose ancestors were not slaves like Barack Obama? Uh, what about uh, whites whose ancestors were not slave owners? What about whites who were abolitionists, for example? You know, it brings up a lot of interesting questions. I want to talk to Simon Roche and uh, get an update on what's happening to the people there who are right now uh, being threatened, uh, being killed, uh, massive violence conducted against uh, white farmers there. And uh, it is not simply a black and white division. It's not that simple. As he pointed out uh, before when he's been on, uh, the, the Zulus are actually opposing the black communists and siding with the white farmers there in South Africa. Uh, the organization, in case you want to support them, is Sudlanders.org. Sudland, that's S-U-I-D-L-A-N-D-E-R-S.org. Uh, these people are trying to organize uh, themselves to defend themselves, to defend their lives. Uh, if these people who are running that country are successful, and, uh, and they've already said, yeah, we can take your land if we want it. We've, we've passed a law. That's democracy in action for you, right? And so if they can pass a law in South Africa to suspend the Constitution, to suspend private property, and say, if we say so, for whatever reason, we can take your property, of course, the Democrats can do the same thing here. They can do the same thing with reparations. Uh, what is happening now in South Africa is our future, and our future is coming faster than you can believe. So joining us now from South Africa is Simon Roche. Thank you for joining us, Simon. Good, good evening, uh, or good morning, Mr. Knight. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Is it evening uh, where you are? Yeah, it's 6.30 yes. in the evening. Yes, yes. Well, that's the miracle of uh, the Internet, isn't it? We can, we can talk across the globe. Uh, tell us what's going on in South Africa right now uh, with uh, this uh, move by the communists to, to seize land and justify it on racial uh, grounds. Well, it's proceeding. Uh, they are determined to, to carry it through. At the moment, there's a, a number of other things that are on the go as well. Uh, we will have uh, national elections on the 8th of May, and there's tremendous tension in the country, so much so that, um, as we have recently publicized, uh, State Landers, uh, the uh, uh, intelligence services are telling us, believe it or not, that they are concerned about this period before the elections. On top of that sabotage, uh, has led to our national electricity supplier losing. We've we've gone through the figures, and um, if we give the greatest benefit of the doubt to the figures, a minimum of 48.88% recurring of our electricity has not been available, of our e electricity generation capacity has not been available in recent weeks. So that's 49%. Can you imagine that happening in the USA? We well, really that's have amazing. A number so, of so what is happening with that, Simon? With the electricity, are they saying that the the plants are down, or are they just uh, switching it off to certain regions? Is it uh, uh, is it is it uh, to certain areas that they've lost uh, fifty percent of their power, or is it fifty percent overall, or what's what's going on? Well, we have an integrated national grid, 
meaning that if there is a shortage of power, they implement rolling blackouts. So everybody across the country has a turn while they spare uh, the, the shortfall. Um, it's, as I say, uh, caused by sabotage, as has come out recently, although the, the government and the electricity supplier have variously claimed that it's because of a shortage of, of a shortage of coal. But we are the world's third largest exporter of coal. We export coal to the entire globe, coal of the highest quality. Uh, hmm. So it's all just nonsense, layers and layers of nonsense. Well, I mean, uh, is it uh, you think it's sabotage of people actually uh, uh, destroying plants or is it the kind of sabotage that we see being proposed by Democrats here who want to withhold certain? I mean, we've got a massive amount of coal here in the United States. That's one of the reasons why they have focused on saying you can't have coal and we don't care how cleanly you burn it. Uh, we're not going to let you have it under any circumstances. We're going to shut that down because even back in the 1960s, you know, Simon, uh, New Time and Newsweek back in the late 1970s were saying that we're going to be out of uh, oil and natural gas by the mid-1980s. I thought it was so hilarious. I saved the magazines, and I've shown them on air many times. But for coal, they said we had another 500 years. That is why I think they focused on coal. Are they doing the same thing there? I mean, is this a, a policy that's being justified in the name of saving the planet to restrict this, or is this outright sabotage in terms of uh, destruction of equipment? It is. It appears as if it is a cabal within the electricity supplier. It's called ESCOM, which is loyal to the man who appointed them, namely our previous president, Jacob Zuma. And it seems as if these guys are doing all that they can to be as disruptive as possible in league with the Marxist parties, particularly the Economic Freedom Fighters Party, to create some kind of a crisis in South Africa. And certainly that is what the intelligence agencies and others are saying very, very privately. So it it's, has even more parallels to what's going on here in the United States, besides the reparation stuff and besides trying to justify uh, outright Marxist and socialist theft along racial lines. They're also essentially attacking your uh, energy production uh, along those same lines. And what is happening to food? Because they have uh, confiscated quite a, a large number of uh, farms uh, you are now having to uh, import uh, food that you didn't have to import before. Is that correct? Yeah. In in all honesty, it's it's partly because of the uh, the land uh, redistribution process, and partly because of the tremendous drought that we've had recently. Um, we live. The leadership group of our organisation lives in uh, a region which is very rural, and we speak to the farmers every day. And those farmers are currently, because of the shortage of corn, are currently getting three times, almost precisely three times, the amount for the, this current harvest as they did for last year's equivalent harvest. Um, so we are staring in the face an absolute crisis in terms of food prices. The staple foods of South Africa have to be cheap for the poorest of the poor to afford because we're sitting with a massive unemployment of 38.1 percent official unemployment unofficial uh, unemployment of 50 percent so Whoa. if if the staple food prices go up by three times as they have to do because that's what they're paying the farmers the farmers are receiving we're going to have a big problem well simply supply and demand and then once you have a situation where you've got 38% unemployment and you got food prices tripling, uh, that is going to create social unrest. It's a given. That may be one of the key reasons why the Marxists, besides just their general uh, appetite for theft, that may be one of the key reasons that they want to have a race war because they can always point to somebody else as uh, being the enemy, you know, so they can uh, make you guys the enemy. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're talking to Simon Roche. Uh, Sudlanders.org. That's S U I D L A N D E R S.org. We're going to take a look at America's future as seen in South Africa right now. Welcome back. We're talking to Simon Roche in South Africa. He is with an organization, Sudlanders.org. As they point out, uh, they need, urgently need funds for vital necessities for civilians, particularly diesel fuel. Uh, this is a civil war that has been promised to them. And uh, when they wrote this, this is about a year ago. Six or seven times has been promised a lot more explicitly, a lot more times uh, than that now. A promised civil war by ANC Marxist uh, government leaders. 
uh, and also, uh, well, the ANC is Marxist enough, but there's actually an even more radical Marxist political party uh, there in South Africa. Uh, Simon was just telling us about the upcoming election, building up of uh, tensions uh, May 8th. They have 38% unemployment. Food prices have tripled uh, because of weather and other issues, and also uh, uh, you're running off uh, uh, white farmers off the land and, and so forth. They're trying to establish this civil war as a race-based situation. But when you got uh, systemic problems like uh, 38% unemployment, the government needs to uh, deflect criticism and hatred away from itself onto other people. This is how wars begin, civil wars and otherwise. And Simon is also telling us about rolling blackouts that are happening there because, of course, the uh, Marxists uh, for international support have bought into this climate change stuff and are su shutting down coal, which they have in abundance. They're the number three uh, supplier of coal. Uh, so like the United States, they have a great deal of uh, natural coal. So that has to be shut down. Cannot use that, just like they're doing that here. So there's a lot of parallels between what is going on in South Africa and what the Democrats want for us with both the uh, Green do New Deal and the uh, old Marxist deal of land confiscation that uh, or whatever they're going to confiscate. They haven't been specific about that, the Democrats. They don't really talk about how they're going to pay for the reparations. Who's going to have the money or the property taken from them and who's going to get it? As I said before, you know, who, who's black and who's white and who had slaves and who didn't? Uh, do the whites whose ancestors uh, didn't own slaves, who maybe uh, they were abolitionists, do they get any credits? Uh, Simon, you originally were uh, working to stop apartheid, and uh, then you realized after the ANC got in that they were hardcore Marxists, right? Is that correct? Yeah, that, that is correct. Uh, in my youth at university and so on, I was one of those people who believed that we should endeavor to reconcile and work together and and so on. And I was uh, very active. Um, but subsequently, I began to appreciate, uh, through doing a lot of work very closely uh, with the, the dominant parties, the, the government and the ruling party and so on, uh, that it was all a sham. It was absolute nonsense. It was just absolute nonsense. Everything that they said, every promise that they made, every value that they claimed to have, um, and uh, so I had some sort of a conversion experience, a uh, kind of a road to Damascus, if you like. Yeah, well, you know, they use humanitarian issues uh, that everybody would agree with in order to get into power. Uh, they talk about the poor, they talk yes. about the oppressed and so forth, but they are not going to help. They never do help the poor or the oppressed. We've seen this happen over and over again with socialist uh, economies, with communist economies. They just want central control of everybody's lives. And uh, you've got other crises that are happening there besides the uh, power and the food crisis as well, don't you, at this point in time? Yes, well, as I said to you, we have uh, an election coming up and there's tremendous tension throughout the country. Um, the Economic Freedom Fighters uh, Marxist Party, the one uh, that has spoken at various times about uh, killing whites and so on and so forth, um, <clears throat> is they used to sing a song called Kill the Farmer, Kill the Boer. They were taken to court repeatedly, and so they had to stop singing. So what they sing now, very much ironically, of course, is kiss the farmer, kiss the boer, brr, brr, ba, ba, brr, huh. brr, ba, ba. The implication is, and this is part of their election campaign. Wow. I mean, it, it's, it's unbelievable. This is yeah. the madness that we live in. And on top of that, we have... <clears throat> a situation now where the water scientists have been warning for about 10 years that our water infrastructure is on the very verge of crumbling spectacularly. They mm. have, there's a consensus between them that it would take, due to the fact that no money has been invested by the, 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 the communists for the past 25 years in that infrastructure, that it would take three trillion to fix it. Our entire GDP is just about one trillion. So there's, wow. there is no way that it can be repaired. So therefore, on top of everything else, we're staring this massive uh, cholera crisis in the eye. So when we look at unemployment of uh, 38 percent, and again, uh, during the Great Depression, uh, unemployment here in the U.S. was about 25 percent. Uh, so it's significantly higher than it was. Then. You look at that, you look at a crumbling infrastructure in the cities where that's really going to be felt with water. Uh, and it uh, makes it very clear why they want to uh, focus people on an external enemy. You know, go go outside the cities and go fight those white farmers out in the fields. 
And yet it yes. is not a black and white issue, as you pointed out before. Uh, a lot of the people who are now citing and supporting the ANC communists are people who were immigrants from other countries. The, the Zulus are essentially supporting you guys because they understand that they are next if they uh, come after the land. The indigenous Zulus uh, don't want to see the Marxists confiscating land. It's the people who immigrated in uh, uh, the last uh, few decades or so that are now supporting that. Is that correct? Yeah, loosely speaking, it is. It's not a clear cut and dried thing. Um, there are many different factions and orientations, and some of the uh, alliances are alliances of convenience and nothing else. But it is true to say that the Zulu king told the African National Congress in no uncertain terms that if they nationalize his land, there is going to be a war. And he owns 32 percent, or he is the trustee of 32 percent of the province of KwaZulu-Natal, which, by the way, gives the lie to the whole notion that, uh, that you know, 8% of the population, namely the whites, own 90% of the land. It's a complete fiction. Uh, we, we needn't go into it now, but it's absolute rubbish. Um, <clears throat> so, But you did have a massive uh, wave of immigration as well uh, th that wasn't uh, that yes. long ago, right? Yes. It, since the fall of apartheid, the ANC has made it very easy for immigrants to come into South Africa. So there are now something like about 10% of our population has come into South Africa just from uh, the country of uh, Zimbabwe and Mozambique next door to it. We've had immigrants from West Africa, Central Africa, you name it, a massive wave of immigration, which has uh, supplanted uh, the indigenous, if you like, labor force. On top mm -hmm. of that, we've had a large wave of immigration from Pakistan and Bangladesh. Also, many, many Chinese, hundreds and hundreds of thousands. Uh, and it's creating a crisis. You know, this just doesn't work. Unfettered immigration does not work. So it's, it's amazing to see all the different parallels. You know, we have an, an aspect of uh, environmentalism here, shutting down the infrastructure, giving you rolling blackouts, a 48% reduction in power. Uh, we have uh, the uh, Marxists who are opening up the borders, bringing in people who they know are going to be loyal to them. I'm sure they're handing them out some nice subsidies as well to make sure that they're going to be loyal to them to create a fifth column uh, to support their uh, process. And then throwing into all this mix uh, a, uh, a nice dose of uh, racial division. These are the same tactics that the people are using globally everywhere. Uh, it's not just there, but it's also we see these same types of things being done throughout Europe, but especially here in America. And here in America, we have uh, these policies being talked about now openly by by the uh, Democrats. Uh, last time I talked to you, we said, uh, yeah, this is absolutely coming to America. I'm surprised at how quickly I am surprised at how quickly uh, this has come to America. Uh, the same types of things. Oh, it's that you're astonishing. Facing. Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. astonishing for us as external observers to see how quickly they're doing it to you guys is, is phenomenal for us. Uh, we're aghast at how the um, how America has been beguiled into buying into this yes. um, and how little resistance there is to its imposition. I think that we've all been caught by surprise on this matter. I think that, that the world, the whole world, familiar as it might be with the United States, the character of, of core America, as it were, didn't expect it to happen this way. It's amazing. Absolutely true. And, and of course, the, you there, the Sudlanders, are the canaries in the coal mine, even though they don't want coal mines anymore. You guys are the proverbial uh, uh, first effect of all this. We can see how these policies are playing out. It's, it's amazing to me that people can't see what's going on in South Africa. They can't see what's going on in Venezuela. They have absolutely no understanding of history. They pay no attention to what's going on in North Korea versus South Korea. We're embracing socialism. We're embracing this racism, calling for reparations. And we can see how this is being used by the people who want to steal and kill, and they're doing it in South Africa. If you want to help Simon Roche and his organization uh, fight for their lives, their very lives, uh, not only their property, but their very lives, Sudlanders.org. That's S-U-I-D-L-A-N-D-E-R-S.org. God bless you, Simon. Thanks for joining us. God bless and you. And that's our program. Thank you. Thank you. We need to go back and revisit the foundations of our freedom. Our freedoms don't consist of the things that are enumerated on a piece of paper. It consists of the things that we're willing to fight for. 
The First Amendment, the Bill of Rights, the rest of the Bill of Rights are prohibitions. They're prohibitions against powerful organizations and individuals taking those God-given rights from us as individuals. You better understand that because they're taking them right now. We have seen what they want to do. They called it UN Agenda 21. Now they call it the UN 2030 Agenda. They want everybody off of the rural lands. They want people out of the suburbs. They want to pack everybody into the cities because that's where it is easiest for them to control everyone. Never miss your show any day. I, I, mean, I, I mean, never.